Well, hi there. Let's talk today about 404 errors and how to fix them with 301 redirects. When you're talking about these errors, it's kind of a technical thing. Um, so it's important to understand why you even bother paying attention to it. 404 errors are what happens when you try to go to a URL that no longer exists on your website. So on our website, if we were to try to go to, for example, something just made up, what comes up is a page not found, which is called a 404 error. So it's basically the website saying back to the browser, hey, there's nothing at this address that you just tried to put in, try again. So what happens is Google takes an index of your site. So they have a certain number of URLs that are in, the, in their index that they believe to send you to a current page of the website. So if you were to, for example, if we were to delete our about page or change it to company or something else, we have to actually tell Google about it. Google comes and crawls your website as well, but there's no other way for them to automatically know that this website URL is updated, so it could easily have been a deleted page and they can still send visitors to it. So that's why for SEO it's really important to make sure that you're setting up what's called 301 redirects. 301 redirects are things that on the server tell any browser that tries to ask for a certain address, hey, that address doesn't actually exist anymore, um, but all the stuff from it, it's moved over here now, so go to this address instead. That's what a 301 redirect does, talking to your browser, and it redirects the visitor to a more relevant page. So uh, it's really important for SEO because Google doesn't want to send people to pages that no longer exist like this one. It's not a good user experience, so if they see them happen over and over again, they will start to uh, decrease your rankings. Okay, so this is why it's important. Um, there is a free way to monitor your 404 errors, because how else would you even know that they're happening? And that's in what's called Google Webmaster Tools, which is now renamed to Google Search Console, but it still lives at google.com forward slash webmasters. So go there, Claiming your site is a whole nother topic, so let's hope you've already done that. So once you get there, to look up your 404 errors, you go to crawl. Within the crawl settings on the left-hand side, select crawl errors. Once you load your crawl errors, you want to go over for our purposes today to the not found tab right here. The not found tab will then give you a list of all of the pages that are generating 404 errors the last time that Google checked. There's some cool things about the way Google sets this up. One is that Google automatically tells you which ones are the most important to get fixed with their little priority list right here. Then they give you the URL of the actual error page so that you know exactly what you need to fix. And finally, over on the right hand side, they tell you what date they actually detected it. So you can tell how long this has been a problem for or if it's something that's brand new, uh, this is especially helpful if you have a bunch of these. And if you've never checked for this before or haven't done it in a long time, or just recently launched a new website and didn't do redirects, you'll probably find that your list is really, really long. Uh, don't worry about that. It happens, just get it caught up, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, if we were to click in to one of these options, they give you even more information. When it was first detected, how long has it, it's been going on and the last time that they looked for it. So it looks like we've had on our website this one for about two months. So first we can click on it and test it. Is this still an issue or is this one we've already caught? Looks like this one's still an issue, so we need to set up a redirect to fix it. Now if you have a WordPress website, it's not too hard to fix. So let's jump over to WordPress. You can use a free plugin called Simple 301 Redirects, and there's a ton of them out there, so you can use whichever one is best for you. So here's an example of how to set up 301 Redirects with the Simple 301 Redirects plugin. First, we need to put in the URL that is no longer valid and generating an error. We have it right here in the address bar. Now with Simple 301 Redirects, they're already assuming the domain, so you don't need to put in the Lawton.digital part, or whatever your domain.com is. Instead, you can just start at that first slash and copy from there forward. So now that I've copied it to my clipboard, 
I'm going to go back over to the 301 Redirects plugin. And I'm going to paste that URL starting with that slash after the domain. And then, now that we've said, okay, this is the error page, now we need to tell the plugin where that traffic should go instead. Now in this case, there's actually a blog post about Simult, so it must be that we just change the name of the category or something. So we can just go to the blog and we can search for the Simult blog post. Here it is. Okay, so now I see the problem. So it was the URL structure changed so that all of our blog posts lived at blog. And as a result, that one was generating an error. We must have missed that redirect when we did the change. So we're going to go back to the plugin. This is where we want to send the traffic because that's where the content moved to. And put in the URL where it should go. Hit Save Changes. Now, this should update in real time. So you should now be able to test out that old URL again and get where you need to go. So we're just going to hit Refresh here. And looks like our 301 redirect is working just like it should. Redirected us to the new URL, and now there's no longer an error. Since there's no longer an error, we want to go back to Google Search Console and let Google know, hey, we took care of this, it's fixed. So there's a little button here, mark as fixed. And then you're done. So a lot of times you're going to have a long list of these. So if you want to download them so that you can manage them, filter them, anything, you can do that right in Google Webmaster Tools as well. So you can hit the download button right here on the bottom left. You can choose to download it as a CSV or straight into a Google spreadsheet. And that's what we've done for an example. Here's an example of the export before we fix some of the ones that we recently caught. It shows you all the information that you need. This is really great for working in-house with your dev team or if you're an agency and you're trying to gather these to give recommendations to your webmaster team. The one other tool that you can use if you're checking on redirects regularly is called Raven Tools. Raven Tools is a premium reporting tool. And we're going to go over to that real quick. We really like it because it gives us a full site audit and a couple more perks. So we're going to go check out the site auditor in Raven real quick. So you can jump off the video now if you're good with the Google Webmaster Tools version. So in Raven, go to SEO, Site Auditor, and within Site Auditor, select the Visibility tab. Once you're in Visibility, on the left hand or on the right hand side, you'll have a couple of different tab options that let you filter through all of the results. You're going to want to select All Page Errors. All Page Errors most of the time is going to pull up your 404 not found errors because they're the most common kind. You still get to know based on when it was last crawled, when all of these errors were found. So if you're monitoring through Google Webmaster Tools, some of these might re be redundant. But we have found before that this one caught things that were not caught by Google Webmaster Tools. So you can check on these links by clicking on them to find out whether or not you've already fixed them. So let's test it. Looks like that one's already been fixed because it automatically linked to the correct URL. And you can go back and see that it was different than the old one. Oops. So a couple of things that are really nice about this tool are that you can export it both to a CSV and you only want to do current view so you don't do the whole audit or you can actually save it to a PDF if that's more convenient for you. And the PDF looks like this. So it's pretty nice looking. Most of the time we end up using a CSV because it allows us to, uh, to add cells and do tracking and collaborate with the team more easily. Uh, but sometimes this can be handy if you're generating a report for a client. Also, if you click over on the pages section, you can see exactly what pages the website linked back to that old link that they found the 404 error for. So if you're trying to also update your links throughout the website to get rid of the old ones, here's a perfect list of exactly what you need. You can also set the site auditor to run more often if you want it to run right after a site launch. So it's really convenient as Google Webmaster Tools, you're pretty much at the mercy of when they happen to come back and look over your website again. And also 
what pages they just happen to decide to crawl again. Whereas Raven, you can actually manually force it to crawl your entire website. So it's really important that you are trying to find something that checks the entire site. Raven's a good tool for that, or at least we like it. So just to sum up, you have two different ways to view and monitor your 404 errors. You can review them in Raven, a premium tool, where you can make sure that it's manually crawling at a time period that works for you and gets all of your pages. Also, it can be part of a PDF report. Or you can rely on Google Search Console, which was previously called Google Webmaster Tools, where you can find in the crawl errors section all of the crawling errors that Google determines that are important and wants to let you know about so that you can fix them. You can also mark them as fixed in this tool. Both of them let you export. Um, if you're implementing, you can do it at the server level as well. We usually recommend using a WordPress plugin because it's the easiest to manage and also to collaborate, since usually not everybody has server access. There's plenty of free plugins that you can put in in WordPress that are reputable that will manage your 301 redirects for you. And that's all. Thanks. Hope this helped.